Okay, my name is Tiago Bosses. Um, I'm a solution architect at SSW. Uh, I've got some background in SharePoint and MVC and some search, but that's not really relevant in here. Um, I'm currently in love with Angular 2 and I've been learning a lot. Uh, if you want to contact me, this is my Twitter handle, so feel free. Today I'm going to talk about Angular 2 routing. I'm going to try to hit Hero today, but I'm not sure if we'll get there. Um, and the agenda for today is I'm going to show you how to implement <coughs> routing in a brand new uh, Angular 2 using the Angular 2 CLI. If you haven't checked the CLI, have a look. It's pretty cool. It's pretty simple to use. Um, after that, I'm going to show you how to lazy load the, the routes, which is pretty interesting. If you have a big system, you don't want the whole JavaScript to load at once. So that's pretty handy for that. Um, and hopefully I'll have time to show you how to secure the routes. 90% um, of the time, we have the backend already secured by whatever authentication you have. Um, but most of the time, you, you don't secure that in the client side. So you go to the client, uh, and you actually have access to the route, even though uh, it doesn't load anything or anything like that. Um, it creates some sort of expectations to, to the user. So I'm going to show you how to secure that. Um, again, Angular CLI, um, that's it. It's pretty straightforward to, to set up. If you haven't used, uh, give it a go. And I'm going to go straight to the demo. Um, if you're interested to get the source code, that's the URL. Just go and grab it. Um, and that's it. I'm just going to sit now and start the demo. Okay, so with the CLI, as soon as I hit um, ng new and the name of the application, it creates this whole structure here for my app. I'm not going to go through this structure, it would be pretty boring, but um, I've got the app folder here and all the, the, the application will be here. So I'm going to show you from here how to implement route and do all the, the kind of stuff. All right, so where, to, where, where do I start from? So. As you can see here, I've got a bootstrap to start the application using the, this main component here. And this pretty much loads one component only with a template URL that loads only a title, right? So if I go to the browser, all you can see here is app works, all right? So if I go back to the component, that's the title, and that's being show, shown in here, the title. Okay, so instead of one component, I, ha I want to have multiple components and then route that um, through the application. And I'm going to do this now. So first, I'm going to import some of the route stuff. I'm going to explain all that in a sec, but uh, I'll import the router module and the route. Okay, so now I have to start um, configuring the route, so start creating each route for the application. So I'm going to create here some routes of the type routes, which is pretty much an, an array of routes. Okay, and in the import, what I'll do is I'm going to get the route module to use for the, for the root of the application. I'm going to use that route that I just created up there. Um, and that's it. I've, I've started the application with uh, the route, and now I have to start setting up the, all the routes of the application. Okay, so for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, a home component, and that's where I, where I want the application to land as soon as, as the application starts. So what I'll do here, I'm going to create a path, uh, an empty path, and I want to load a home component. At this point in time, the home component is not imported, so that's what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to import here the home component. And you can see that the home component doesn't exist yet, so I'm going to get that home component. And I'm going to also declare the home component so I don't waste any time. 
All right, so I'm gonna, going to create a folder and a home component. Okay. I'm going to create a file. And here I'm using um, John Papa's snippets for Angular 2. If you haven't used that, that's pretty cool as well. So it creates the whole thing for me. Um, and I'll just remove some stuff that I don't need at this, at this point in time. Sorry if I'm, I'm being too quick. Uh, I'll try to go as much as I can here. So, hello from home. And I'll uh, rename this guy here. Okay, so I've got the component, the home component. In the module, I have the routes. I'm importing the home component. I'm declaring the home component. And I'm starting the route here. Okay, so if I go to the, to the browser now, it should work, right? Uh, not really. If you have a look at the, the logs here, I'm not sure if you can, can you read the logs though? Uh, nope. All right. So it says here, cannot find primary outlet. Okay. So that's the bit missing. For, for Angular to, to uh, load the route somewhere, you have to tell where you want that to load. So in the, in the app component here, all I have is title. So what's missing here is the router outlet. Okay. So once I have that, Angular is going to get this route out there and load any route inside this, this piece here. I'm going to save. This is going to compile the application. And I'm going to go back here. Cool. So that's the, that's the implementation. Easy as that. All right, so the next bit is going to be switching between routes. So once I have multiple routes, I want to be able to switch within the application and not type in the address bar, right? And it's as, much, it's as much simple as creating the route. So I'm going to create here a bar component. So I can create a route to go to this component here. Hello from about. Cool. So in my module, the only route I have here is path, so I'm going to create another one. I'm going to create one that goes to about. And I'm going to load this about here. All right, so what about? It's a lot of repetition, isn't it? OK, so if I save that, you can see that it's going to load the home component by default. And then if I go to about, it's going to go to the rock, the other rock. OK, but I want to be able to switch that uh, within the application. So let's go back to the app component here. I'm going to create some links here, just so I can navigate through it. So I'm going to create a, a home. And instead of the, the usual href, I'm going to use the router link. OK, and I'm going to the, to the root path, which is just a forward slash. And also, I'm going to create another one called about. Simple, right? So if I come here, that's going to refresh at any time. <coughs> and if I click on about, go to about, home, go to home. All right, that's straightforward. Um, what, if, what if I want to send some parameters to the routes? Because that, that's what's happened, what happens all the time. So I want to send a parameter like an ID or anything like that, so I can treat that in the route. So how do I achieve that? So in the route here, all I need to do is say that the parameter name I want to I wanna grab. And in the component, I have to, to load a few things here. So I have to load to import. Um, 
too big a route. That's what it is. All right, so I'm going to inject that into my application. So I'm going to just put an ID here so I can bind that somewhere. So I'm going to put, put an ID as a string. And I'm going to bind here. So I'm going to get the activated route, params, and I'm going to, I'm going to subscribe. So everything in Angular um, works as, a, as an, an observer. So as soon as it loads a route, it doesn't mean that the parameter is there. So you, you're going to pass a subscribe, uh, uh, an observable and subscribe. So as soon as the parameter is available, it's going to come back to you. So I subscribe to the parameters, and now I can bind that to here. So reserve, and I can get the ID and bind to my, to my property. Easy? Um, OK, so I'm just going to put that in here so we can see. All right. So if I go back to my application, at first it's going to fail because I'm not passing any parameter. And if you do require a parameter, you have to send a parameter. But if I go to the address bar here and send 100, for example, it loads hello from, and you have 100. So from that, you can do any HP request or anything like that to load anything from the server. Cool. I'm just going to update this so we don't crash again. And now, what I'm going to show you is child routes. OK, so now I have the main routes. And one is the home um, route and the about route. What if I what if I want to create sub route? So let's say I, I have an admin uh, main route, and I have on the admin I have uh, users, permissions, email configuration, or anything like that. Um, how do I set up that? Okay, so let's let's go there and start setting up. Okay, so I've got my my admin in here, and instead of setting up the component, what I will do, I'll set up the children for this for this route. And this, this is an array as well. So the way this, this works is the same, the same way as the parent um, route work. So I can have multiple paths here. That will say, for example, user, users. And I can set up the component for that. Oops. OK, so I'm going to have <coughs> users component. So as soon as I go to forward slash admin forward slash users, that's what I'm going to load. Right? I'm going to create that so I can I can see how that works. So I'm going to create this guy here. I'm going to declare this guy. I'm going to create some other structure. All right. So let's hold on for a sec. Admin. Uses dot component of yes. All right, hello from admin users. Okay, so that's pretty much it. In the module, I have this route here, which we have the, the admin uh, as the main route, and the user underneath admin. So if I go back to my app, I can put admin forward slash users, and I should be able to get the users route. Cool? All right. So what do I have next? Now I have the, the nested outlet. So I'm not going to cover that in, in, in too much detail, although I don't have time to finish that. But the idea of it is let's say you have an admin page, and in the admin in the admin section of your application, you have some um, common user um, interface. Let's say a navigation or filter or anything like that, um, and you want that to be used across all the sub routes of the admin route. Okay, so how how would you implement that? 
So instead of loading, loading the admin users component straight into the app component that I have here, in straight, in straight into this router outlet, well, what I'll have, oh, go back to my, to the module. what I'll have is another component here that, that I would have the admin component. And inside this admin component, I would have another router outlet. So I can put anything there, and then I can put another router outlet. So this guy would be loaded inside the router outlet of the admin component, and then inside the router outlet of the, of the app component. All right? Cool. All right, so, so now the, the, the cool things um, that I think it is, uh, at least. So once you have a bunch of routes or uh, and, a, and a bunch of modules in your application, you want the, 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 the routes to be lazy loaded. So you have uh, thousands and millions of lines of JavaScript, and you, you don't want that to be loaded as, at once for the user. So otherwise, it's going to take like 30 seconds, a minute to load the whole system. So you want the application to load as fast as you can at first, and then load the rest as you go. So as you navigate, it loads the rest of the application. So users don't, that don't have admin permission, they shouldn't ever download that piece of code. Okay? And how do we do that? Um, I'm going to start creating some other modules, uh, other components inside the admin, just so we can have a feel of it. And then I'm going to turn the admin route into a module so I can lazy load that module. Okay, does that make sense? Cool. So I'm just going to create another guy here. Permissions. Yes. So before I go there, I just want to show you some, some other cool stuff that I forgot. I'll get there eventually. Okay, so this guy here should be this one. Should be working as expected. Cool. Just gonna load the application again. So if I go to permissions, you see hello from permissions. But what if I go to admin in here? What do you expect to see if you go straight to admin? So you haven't set up any 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 route, any root route for that for that route. So what do you expect to see here? Any four four? Nah, it doesn't doesn't do anything. Like it doesn't load anything because there is no route. Yeah. Makes sense to have a 404 or something like that, but it doesn't it doesn't do anything. So how how to avoid this situation? So in here, instead of having only the, the child routes, let's set up as well the root route. Okay? But I, I don't want to have a component for the root route. Because I, I don't want to show like hello from admin, UI the admin area or anything like that. I, I just want to go straight to users if people go to admin. So instead of setting up the component, I'm just going to set up this redirect too. And I'm going to go to users. As simple as that. So if people go to admin, they'll land on users. Otherwise, if they put permissions, they go to permission. Right? So if I remove that here, hit enter, it goes to user. All right? Cool. So now let's move this into its own module so we can lazy load that part. I'm just going to create here an admin module. And I'm going to create a module. Too easy. I'm just going to bring some stuff from the other module. Let's hang on for a sec. I'm just going to bring this guy across. 
gonna add some stuff. That's not really relevant that much, so you don't need to, to worry about. Okay, so in here, I'll have my users. Okay. I'll get back to that. All right, but what I want here is I want to move all this, this route configuration into the admin module. So I don't need to, to worry about the configuration here at all. So I'm going to ditch all these from here because I don't want that anymore and I'm gonna get back that to that soon and I, I want to configure that in here so I'm going to I'm just gonna leave that for, for a second and I'm gonna copy that just to, to be quicker and I'm gonna set up the, the routes okay and it's going to be this. Cool. So I have the main routes that redirects the user, and I have the user component in here. And permission I have to bring that across, across as well. So if I get that in here, so the admin permission is set. And also this. Cool. Now I have my module, and what's left here to do? In the imports, now I have to set up the same way I set up the, the, the routes here for the main route, I have to set up for the child routes. Okay? But the only difference here is instead of for root, I'm gonna set for child because that's a child route. And I'm going to set the routes. So as soon as soon as it, lo it loads this module here, it's gonna load these these routes. Okay? There are a few things left here. For example, I can't um, declare one component, one component multiple times in the application, so I have to remove some stuff from here. And the other thing, and the most important thing, is you have to load um, the children, and that's just a string. So it's going to be app um, admin admin dot module, and the name of the module is admin module. If I set that right, no, that mean. All right. So if you load the, if you land on the home page, you can load only the home component and all the, the app module, everything under the app module. Um, if you go to the to the about, it's just gonna load that component. And as soon as you hit the admin route, it's gonna load all these module here. Okay, so let's see how that works. So I'm gonna save that. And hopefully it's gonna crash. And it did. Okay, so one tip here. If you're running the ng serve on the CLI and you create a new module, you have to stop inside again. So it knows that you create a new module. Because of all the all the bundling and stuff like that. So I have to come here, stop the process and ng serve again. So it knows what you find the module. So any questions so far? Good to them. Can you show us how it works in the debugger with the lazy loading of routes? What it's actually doing? Like lines coming I'll show you in the um, in the profile. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So I'm just going to create the link here so we can navigate. To that, um, and what that's going to do is going to go to the admin area. Cool, it's going to refresh that. Cool, so if we have a look at the network here, you can see that it, it downloaded a bunch of stuff, all the bundles that um, Angular creates. I'm not sure if you can see that, can you? Yeah, cool. Ah, nice. Cool, can you see now? 
Cool. So if I if I navigate through the the components uh, within the app module, it's not going to load anything else. So it's going to keep the same. As soon as I go to the admin, which is a, a different module, then you're going to see that's going to load um, one thing, which is a chunk. So what Angular 2 does is, as soon as you create a lazy loading and you create a bunch of modules, it creates chunks for each for each module for, for each module. So if you have 10 modules, you're gonna have you're gonna have a, big, like, a bunch of uh, chunks around. So that that's how the all the lazy load works. So as soon as you hit the route, you load that again. Cool. Um, all right. So that's lazy loading. What I'm gonna try to show you now is how to secure the route. So most of, most of the time, people don't have access to the admin area. So 90% of the users or more. Um, so you don't want people with the link sent via Skype or email or anything like that for them to go to the link straight away and then not gauge the route, okay? You want them like not to do that. You don't want them to load that route at all. And how do I do that? So if I go back to my modules, Sorry, to my module and to the to the routes. I've got a bunch of configuration for the routes that I haven't shown you, and I won't have time to show everything. Um, but one of them that I'm going to secure the route with is the can activate. The can activate is very similar to the can load if you're working on with lazy loading, and sometimes it even works the same way. Um, but the the can activate is the one that you're going to use to secure the route. So. Um, as soon as you try to activate that, that route, it's gonna run. You're gonna run a service. You're gonna check if that user has access to that route, and you're gonna stop the user from going to that route. Uh, and from there, you can redirect the user to a login page or uh, four four five hundred or anything like that. Okay, so let's set here as um, route guard. And I'm just going to create a service. So when the user lands in here, this route guard is going to secure the route. Right now, I'm just putting that into the admin path, because that's the only one I want to secure at, at this moment. So I'm going to create, at the root level here, I'm going to create a route um, guard.ts. And I'm going to create a service. All right. So what do I do next here? So I have to import something called can, can activate from the routes, from the Angular router. Angular router. And what I'm gonna do here is can activate. Cool. And then I'm gonna implement that here. Okay, easy as that. Now I'm gonna create my can activate method. That's gonna receive a, bu a bunch of properties. I'm not gonna load these properties at this moment, but you can have all the route um, information in here um, in the permits, so you can check what <coughs> route you're, you're in, so you can secure based on the routes. And you're gonna return a boolean. You can also return an observable of a boolean instead. So if you're, if you're querying the server to check if the user has permission, you're probably gonna use the observable instead of the boolean. Um, but right now, I'm just gonna try this scan activate and I'm gonna return false. Simple as that. So if the user tries to access the admin path, um, it's gonna run the route guard, which is gonna run the can activate and it's gonna return false. So this guy not, is not going to be able to, to go there at all. All right, so I'm going to import this guy into my app <coughs> module. Since this is a service, I have to set this one as a provider. Okay, so I can 
injector in. <coughs> now move that back to the home page so you can see the button. Okay, so now if I go home, I load home, about, load about. If I try admin, it doesn't do anything. So they, they can't go there, right? Because my CanX bit, my route guard is just returning false. Um, the same thing if I try to go admin here. Doesn't, doesn't do anything, so it could, just goes home. If I, if I try admin users, Again, return home. I can also activate that just for the children if I want to. Can activate child, so it goes to the child instead. So it, it loads the the main path, but it doesn't load the, the children. Um, and they can load, as I was talking about before. I could I could, could use that in conjunction of the can activate. And the way this one work, this one works is when you're doing lazy loading, I'm just gonna go back here so you can have a look on how that, how that works. So, as I was showing before about the lazy loading, it loads as you try to navigate to the route. So, even if the user doesn't have access to the route, when they try to go there, it loads the chunk, right? So the user pretty much has the, the source code of that, of that one. Uh, script. So if you want to protect that as well, you can just put a can load here, and then you go back to your route, and you add the can load, implement can load in here as well, and it works the same way as this one. All right, I'm going to save that. Right, so I'm just going to refresh that so we have the, the whole thing. And once I try to go to admin this time, it doesn't load, it doesn't load the chunk at all. So that, that's how the, the can load works. But the can load doesn't stop you from going to the route. So if you, if you load that module somewhere else, somewhere else you're not going to stop the user from activating that route. The, the, the user is still going to go to that route. So if you use, for example, the can load in, in these uh, routes here, it's not going to stop you because the module is already loaded. Um, and the way to, to secure is using the, the can activate instead. So don't use the can load for securing because you're not securing at all. Well, the can activate will do that. All right, um, I think that's it. Um, so I'm going to stop now before I start an, a new topic, otherwise, I won't have time to finish. But I still have. Some minutes to to answer some questions. How do you like if some someone have a debug pointer in the route that and try to change the bit? Um so the question was if someone tries someone to change the debug pointer, debug or something and the debug guy and change it. Um look, this is just to secure the route in the client side, right? So you're not securing the application like at all. So if someone puts a debugger they will be able to to load the, the script. So the script is there, so you can load the script. Um, so the way to secure is, is, is in the server side. So the client side is just for you not to not create expectations to the user. So the user lands in a, into a route that they don't have access, and the page is blind. So the user will say, what the hell? Like, why am I here? All right, anyone else? What's the um, use case for Ken here? Can deactivate. Yeah, I noticed that actually. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty interesting. Um, I think it's just for porn. When you go to porn, they, they, there is that, like that pop ups not to deactivate the route. Yeah. Uh, I don't know really. Uh, well, I didn't find any use case for that. You might have unsaved data, and it's like, you go to can deactivate, oh no, it's not saved. Uh, do you want to save? Yeah. Oh. You can have that. Good point. Any more? Um, the can load can activate using the same guard. Uh, does that cause twice, or does the first one stop the second one? No, nah, it calls twice because one one of them will stop you from loading the the route, and the other one will stop you from activating the route. Um, as you saw before, when you try to activate the route, it still loads the route. Uh, but if you have both, it runs like twice. 
Is there any issue with the venous injection with the laser component? Um, there is. Um, so the way to work around with that is creating uh, a different module. So let, let's say you have the app module and you have the admin module in this case and you want something shared in be between them, you're gonna create a separate, a separate module and import, import the module into the, the two places. Um, and this way you can use, you can reuse code. Are they gonna share the same instance or will they two separate instances of the same point? Uh, that's a good question. I think it's the same instance. Yeah, I think it's single tone because using the same service. Thank you very much. Thank you.